Hey folks, today we're going to learn about Buffon's needle, what that has to do with normal distributions, and how to use a cool statistics trick to find the 95th percentile of distributions in under six minutes. Let's get started. So imagine you've got four lines and you've got about 25 needles, and you throw them up in the air just to see how many of them cross your lines. At any given time, of course, you're going to get different values. But let's say this time around we get about eight. Okay. We try it again. Throw them up in the air. We're gonna land all at random. This time, of course. Nine. If we do this about eight times, we're gonna start to get an average value, and our average is gonna be just a little under eight. But what's more interesting? is that this value is actually going to turn out to be the ratio pi. Now that's cool. Now how does that work? Well, sorry to disappoint, but the physics behind that is kind of complicated and beyond the scope of our discussion. But what we can do is we can look at how those values fall if we were to do it more than just those times. If we start plotting all those values we're going to notice that they follow a smooth and bell-shaped distribution. And not only that, but the number of times, as the number of times that we do this goes up, we're going to get values that are going to go all over the place, but most of them are going to cluster around the mean more than anywhere else. And this clustering is actually a recurring pattern in nature and mathematicians like Gauss used math to describe it, while a mathematician named Pearson dubbed it the normal distribution. And you might be like, well, oh, fancy, what do I care about it? Well, what if instead of doing just eight trials, we did a hundred trials and we wanted to know what are the 95 closest values to our mean? We can take advantage of a really cool property of the normal distribution that predicts that 68% of all values will fall within one standard deviation, whereas 95% of them will fall within two. Now, for those of you who may have forgotten, the standard deviation is really nothing more than, than a measure of how those values are dispersing around the mean. So once we go through all this tedium of calculating, we get a value of about three. So that's telling us we go ahead and we plot our value here. Okay. Two standard deviations. So that 68% will be here. 95% will be here. And 99.7% will be here. Now, in reality, 95.45% of values are going to fall within the two standard deviations. But in many, cal in many calculations, this ballpark figure is good enough. But now what if your boss actually wants exactly 95%? We'll give him 1.96 then. Now, why should we care? Well, I'll give you an example from one of the studies we just read recently, and that is defining low birth weight. Now you can do it one of two ways. One, you can pick a number, or two, you can define the lowest 2.5% of weights. Now, if we wanted to find the lowest 2.5, which is takes advantage of our 95% trick, let's go ahead and imagine that we have here a normal distribution, and our mean value is 3,250 grams. So that our lowest value, our lowest 2.5%, would be right here within two standard deviations. And our so now we know, simple calculation, our danger zone is at 1626. Now, if you want more precision, we can use the 1.96 value, and that's going to give us 1658 and a half. And the difference between these two, it's off by about 2%.
So, we can use the ballpark standard deviation of 2 when 2% 2 is a good enough figure. Now remember, most of the time we have lots of variation in our values, so it should be good enough. But if you want more precision, you can always do 1.96 or 1.959 or a bigger number. So, today what did we learn? Well, we've learned how to use properties of the mean and standard deviation to find the 95th percentile or any other any other value that, um, like on 99.7 or 68% or one of their complements or one of their halves. So if you ever have to figure any of those out, now you know. Okay, folks, got any questions? Let me know, okay? Bye.